Twice a week, a pilot from the 342nd Fighter Squadron flew the mail run from Port Moresby to the advanced base at Dobodura. Today, it was Jimmy DeValerie's turn. He took off at 0640, heading almost directly east. His plane rose slowly above the jungle humidity as the day began to take on its color. It had rained for a week straight, but today would be clear and sunny with excellent visibility. He climbed steadily. Ahead, blocking his route, the Owen Stanley mountain range rose up 10,000 feet. He expected to see no enemy planes on this milk run. The Japanese had mostly been driven from their once formidable base at Lai, not far from Dobodura. The intelligence shack told him he had nothing to worry about, and his ground chief had agreed. Ah, uh, nobody has seen any zeros near there in a month. We put a hundred rounds in two of the machine guns, but nothing in the cannon. You won't need them, though. Have fun, Jimmy. Jimmy planned to. He had flown five combat missions in two weeks and needed a day off. As the Owen Stanleys loomed up in front of him, he thought through the mission. All he had to do was make the pass. Dobadura was only 80 miles ahead, all downhill. It would only take an hour and a half. He wished it were longer. He glanced at the altimeter, which read 7,100 feet, then at the mountains ahead. He needed more power. Jimmy pushed the throttles ahead slightly. The two huge Allison engines responded, and he put the P-38 in a steeper climb. Soon he reached the pass, at 8,200 feet, and then angled down for the long descent. He looked down for enemy troop movements, although he expected none. All he could see was a jungle canopy too thick to see through, except for a few well-worn ridges. No enemy. He thought that was just as well. He looked up, distracted by a speck on his canopy. Must be oil, he muttered. I wish they would tune up these old engines. He looked more closely. It was not a speck of oil. It was something moving in the sky. The specks soon multiplied into four. Jimmy, alarmed, realized they were planes high above him at ten o'clock, maybe five or six miles to the north. He squinted despite his excellent eyesight. Whose planes were they? Immediately, he pushed the throttles all the way forward and began to climb again. If they're Japanese, he thought, and catch me below them, I'll be a sitting duck. Maybe they're friendly planes returning to Port Moresby, but then why would they be so high? He kept watching as they continued directly toward him. Several more seconds passed as his eyes strained. They're Japanese, he blurted out. They're zeros. Jimmy pushed the throttles harder, even though they were already at full power. I need to get higher. With the great weight of his plane, he could dive away from a zero, but he didn't have the altitude. He grabbed for the radio. Mayday, 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 he called. Enemy planes jumping me. He gave his position. He waited, but there was no response. He knew he could never raise Port Moresby with the mountains in the way, but Dobodura was relatively close. Mayday, mayday, mayday. Enemy planes headed for Dobodura. The pressure built in his mind as the planes came closer and closer. There was no answer. He could see the enemy planes' markings distinctly. Why isn't Dobadura answering? he wondered.